السابق علي عبد الله صالح The former president of Yemen has been killed قرار اعدام خميمي 100% Yemen's ousted president was known for shifting loyalty على حساب حليفهم The killing of Ali Abdullah Saleh has plunged Yemen into even more uncertainty The story of the late former president of Yemen Ali Abdullah Saleh was never a straightforward one Why would the coverage of his death be any different? Tune in to the Saudi Arabian version and Saleh's killing this past week by Houthi rebels is used as justification for continuing the bombing campaign, a war that has already claimed as many as 10,000 lives and left millions suffering in what's being called the world's worst current humanitarian disaster. Pro-Houthi media saw Saleh's savage end as a blow to Saudi efforts to overthrow them. Foreign audiences can be forgiven their confusion over the causes of this conflict given that much of the coverage of the war's primary architect, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia, has been effusive, even enthusiastic. There's been little reporting of the behind-the-scenes roles that Britain and the U.S. are playing, underwriting the Saudis with arms, expertise, and diplomatic cover. There are plenty of angles to this story, including the alleged role Iran is playing in Yemen, an angle long on allegations, short on proof. Our starting point this week is the Yemeni capital, Sana'a. If you want to understand the context behind the assassination of Ali Abdullah Saleh, look away from the images of the chaotic, gruesome aftermath captured on a phone camera that served as the visual starting point for so much of the breaking news coverage. Look instead at the way Saudi-owned news media have covered Saleh over the years. Those channels served as weather vanes, constantly shifting, whichever way the geopolitical winds were blowing in Riyadh. The uh, pro-Saudi media um, had moved from uh, one uh, narrative to another, first of all referring to him as the president of Yemen. And then they were referred to him as the former dictator of Yemen. The former corrupt leader of Yemen. We've seen uh, such radical shifts in coverage that it, it was quite amusing in social media and many young Arabs were making fun of the shift to give the contrast between two days ago and now. And in fact, there was one particular Saudi journalist who in the past had heaped scorn on Ali Abdullah Saleh and yet when he was killed, he basically declared him to be this great martyr of Arabism and so on. Uh, so it was, uh, there was a lot of amusement in that regard. The problem with the press, the Saudi-backed uh, press or Saudi-funded press, like all Arab-funded press establishments, uh, is that it is simply a propaganda tool. And therefore, we shouldn't take it as a reflection of any independent thinking, but as a reflection of the political views of the power elite at that moment, because that view can change the next day, just as Ali Abdullah's position changed overnight. If Yemenis are confused by the shifting way their story is being told, they can always watch state-owned Yemen TV. They just have to decide which one. There's the one based in Sana'a, on the air since 1975, now controlled by the Houthi government, and the one Saudi Arabia launched in 2015 that's beamed into Yemen from Riyadh. Two channels with the same name offering distinctly different versions of the same story. The uh, creation of the, of the uh, Yemen TV that is broadcasting out of Riyadh gave some space uh, to the Houthi opponent. وثمن المواقف الأخوية المشرفة لقادة التحالف العربي بقيادة المملكة العربية السعودية الشقيقة. Yet I think it hasn't been able to convince the uh, public opinion inside Sana'a. The Saudi um, funded uh, Yemeni media never really achieved uh, their goal. In fact, there is an increase of Houthi-owned media. And you have to understand that in Yemen, only 26% of the population have an access to internet. And most of uh, the Saudi-supported Yemeni media are taking their platform on the internet. So they're speaking uh, to an audience that's outside, but not inside the country. They're never being able to reach the masses on the ground. 
When they do try to reach the Yemeni masses, Saudi news outlets spend a lot of air time talking about Iran. The narrative goes like this. Shia Iran seeks influence through its Houthi proxies in pursuit of a larger regional hegemony that represents a threat to any Arab country, particularly states with sizable Sunni populations. It was on that basis that Saudi Arabia led the war in Yemen that started in 2015. That war has since turned into a stalemate, a humanitarian catastrophe. And like the military offensive it was supposed to bolster, the Saudi narrative on Iran has grown less popular, less credible with time. From very early on, from 2012 and beyond, there was an insistent in Gulf media in general, but in Saudi media in particular, that there is this very clear plot by the Iranian government. The Gulf media in general did not at any point concede that there are certain religious differences, sectarian differences, between Shiite Twelvers and between the Houthis. And the Americans were from very early on skeptical about the claims of Arab media about the strong relationship and alliances between the Iranian government and the Houthis. The claim that uh, the Houthis uh, are a proxy of Iran and Yemen is, is ludicrous. And most knowledgeable observers of the Middle East don't take it very seriously. And this is a real problem because uh, if suddenly the Saudis and the Iranians enter into negotiations, which will happen eventually, it has to. The Arab uh, media that is close to Saudi Arabia or funded by it is suddenly going to turn on a dime and they're going to suddenly talk about Iran as a strategic partner and a good neighbor and we live together in respect uh, and peace. So the credibility of the media uh, has been terribly, terribly damaged uh, uh, all across the Arab world when the Saudis and others use it to push a propagandistic case. The Saudis have also pushed their case in the international media through a public relations offensive aimed at diplomats and news organizations. That has borne fruit in the relatively positive reviews for the new crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, who championed the same war in Yemen that has morphed into a quagmire. The PR offensive may have led the international news media to divorce the humanitarian side of this story from the political, to divorce the effect from the cause. If you compare how they covered another humanitarian tragedy in Syria, they were very keen and specific of holding exclusively the Assad regime responsible. I mean, certainly the Assad regime is responsible partly for the tragedy of Syria, as are the Syrian rebels. The Anglo-American media has been criminally complicit in not reporting accurately about what actually is going on in Yemen in terms of the deeper context of who is responsible or who is engaged in the war uh, in Yemen. It's presented as a great tragedy. The conflict, now in its third year, has created this man-made disaster. It's presented as a humanitarian crisis. This is what the world's largest humanitarian crisis looks like. But they tend not to report the involvement of the British and American government and other Western governments in arms sales to the Saudis and Emiratis, uh, helping refuel airplanes, intelligence and reconnaissance. And the political cover that they often give by trying to protect Saudi Arabia. The Houthi authorities can claim victim status in this Saudi-led media war, but they are hardly innocent parties. Their version of state-owned Yemen TV is tightly controlled, and they have shown little tolerance for critical reporting by Yemeni journalists. It's not a shrinking uh, place for independent and local press landscape. It's almost like zero space. As we speak, there are about uh, 41 media individuals arrested in the hands of Houthis, storming into many institutions that include also Ali Abdullah Saleh led media offices. Yemen used to be a complicated story. It is today and absolutely uh, more complicated than ever before. The only media that exists today uh, in Yemen, it's uh, absolutely in control of the Houthi rebel group. Shifting narratives coming out of Riyadh. Twin Yemen TV channels, identical in name, ideologically opposed in nature. Humanitarian effects overshadowing geopolitical causes. 
and a Saudi charm offensive that seems to be working. There's a lot to the Yemen story, more than the media on either side have given it.